Okay, welcome back to Studio Kitchen Colorado. We're doing a little shift over right here, uh, but this will give me an opportunity to thank a couple of people. First of all, from Avelina, and go down and support these guys. Just getting back in the role, putting out delicious food, and thank you to Chef Josh Oakley and Chef Anthony Mills for coming down here and joining us today. Uh, again, Avelina at 1550 17th Avenue, and their hours of operation right now are from uh, Tuesday to Saturday. 5 to 9 p.m. Go ahead and get your reservation just right now. And coming uh, in full swing is season 19 of Hell's Kitchen. That's Thursday evenings at 7 p.m. And you can catch that here uh, locally at 7 p.m. on Fox. Um, right now, what we're going to do, and I'll tell you what, you guys. If you are uh, in the business, you've, you've worked in a kitchen, you're, you've been on the bench for a little while, or you just want to sharpen your skills, Listen up to what I'm saying, but also if you have any interest and you've watched the Modern Eater show for a while and you're, in a, you're like, you know what, I really love that kitchen culture. I love to cook at home. I love delicious food. Um, I want to get into the, the, the role of it. Here's an opportunity for you, and it's a no-cost opportunity. It's a free. It's a gimme. And you also come away with some certification, the Surf Safe certification. Um, go to themoderneater.com. And look at the top navigation bar. It says Emily Griffith Culinary Quick Start. We're starting to compile a lot of work that they're doing in Studio Kitchen. And also there's a sign-up form. Sorry, Chef. I mean, Chef's way. There's a sign-up form for you. If you're interested, we'll reach out to you and have somebody contact you. Right now, school is in session. Got a couple of weeks left. The first week is down for the count. Right? Yep. Yeah. We're all that, done. That one's all done. Now we're getting in a couple weeks. I've been sitting in on these. I, I have thoroughly enjoyed myself Great. watching you guys do this. And truly, the skills that you will get from watching this class and having the opportunity to join them here in Studio Kitchen, it's going to be memorable for you. And it's also going to pay dividends because you will have that baseline knowledge of getting into a kitchen. So, Chef, come on in here. Let me introduce <laughs> these gentlemen to you. Their classes are private in the evenings, Monday through Thursday. It started about 5.30 p.m. And it's on a Zoom call, but it's a pretty high production <laughs> process that we're doing here in the kitchen for cooking. But without further ado, uh, Chef Marcus Ang, good to see you again. Yeah, great to be here. Yeah, Chef hey. Blake Stein, good to see you. <laughs> Thank you. All right, brother. Um, th the class itself, again, beyond awe. I love sitting down, watching you guys. I've even participated a couple of times. But the overall course that takes three weeks long, what are the things that you're covering? Oh, man, there's so much. A lot. Yeah, it's it's pretty much zero to 100 miles an hour right out of the gates. Um, specifically this week, we're, we're building resumes for each and every one of our students. Mm -hmm. um, we're working on them to get serve, safe certified uh, before our hiring fair, which we're having on Wednesday. Uh, we're going to be braising chicken. We're going to be butchering chickens. We are also doing fresh pasta, which we're going to demo today. First week, kind of, I don't know, knife skills and lots of cutting, lots of dicing. Yep. Um, just really getting you familiarized with the kitchen. Taking a walk around. Second week gets a little more complicated. Yeah, we like to have the bar just a little bit. You know, it gives us a good, uh, a good way to view how they're progressing. We can take a look at their knife cuts uh, mm -hmm. when they share them to us. And we can see how curious they are about recipes and what they're, what they're really absorbing through the class, given that it is a such a high, fast-paced environment, uh, mm -hmm. we, we really encourage these guys to take notes and reflect on those as much as possible. I can tell you guys love to teach. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You love to cook. You best. love to interact as well. You encourage people. Ask questions. Participate. You know, um, the opportunity to work in Studio Kitchen right now and to have the full filming and the different camera angles. First week, kind of basic. Second weeks, we get a little more. But by the end of the third week, uh, Chef Marcus, what, what do you figure you're going to have that stepping off point as you get into that real-time kitchen? Well, well, we hope that uh, by the third week, our students are able to have the skills to kind of, kind of come up with their own dishes mm -hmm. and be creative in that regard. Um, but also, we want them to have the technical abilities and just have the exposure to a lot of techniques that would allow them to be either like a prepper or a line chef at a professional restaurant. 
sounds fantastic. You ever see one of your students come in? Uh, because you both work in restaurants. I see oh, them yeah. at the bar a lot. <laughs> you see them at the <laughs> yeah, bar. I've seen a couple, more there than a couple at the bar. So if you go through this program, you will have a seat at the bar. <laughs> it's, it's pretty cool, though, to see you guys teach and to be in your element. Today we're going to get a little taste of that as well. What are you going to cook up for us today, gents? Uh, we're going to braise some chicken for you guys. Um, we're going to do like almost like a cacciatore style. Um, we've got some like kind of Italian kind of um, aromatics. And then we're going to do a fresh pasta. Uh, and then we're going to grill off some zucchini and a rack of lamb on the charcoal that we have here. We got some work to do. Yeah. Where do you want to begin? Um, let's start with breaking down this chicken All here. Right. Um, it's Blake's specialty. Um, what he's going to do is just break it down into the pieces that we're going to braise. Um, and then we're, he's just going to throw these, he can just throw it all into this uh, thing of flour here. We'll dredge it, and then I'll get this uh, braise going. Chef Oakley took care of his chicken pretty good earlier there. Yep. That, breaking down a chicken, that's, again, one of the basics that you covered in the first week of the class as well. Yep. So, yeah, you can see Blake just peeling off the old breast here. Turn it around. I think every chef has their own technique for this. And as long as you get the job done and you do it well, I really can't argue with that. Technique is everything, though, as you work around that chicken. There is a method to everything that you're doing right now. There yep. sure is. And again, on the Modern Eater website, and people are, I mean, seriously, you want to get in on this ASAP. The next uh, uh, class, string of classes is going to be coming up two weeks. Actually, two weeks you'll be done with this next one and then a week in between. That's correct. And then you'll be back at it. So yes. next month is what we'll basically say. So yep. for February, and just think, by the end of February, you're locked and loaded with those baseline skills that you need to get into that, uh, get into that kitchen <laughs> setting. That's free. <laughs> All right, all so right. what we got here are, we're just gonna braise all these pieces whole. Um, we'll leave the wings and the carcass for uh, stock, but what we're gonna do here um, is we are going to season this flour. Uh, this is just AP flour. We're gonna give it a significant amount of salt, a little bit less pepper, and then just kind of toss it. We don't need a ton, just enough to very, very lightly dredge uh, this chicken. Um, so we're going to do it bone in. It's going to give us like a lot more flavor. Um, like I said, very, very lightly. And we're, we're going to shake off the uh, excess here. And then we're just going to bread all of these. So what we're going to do is we're going to brown these first. And then uh, we're going to kind of just create a sauce around it. And then we're going to return this chicken back and then um, braise it for, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes or so. Not very long. Okay. All right. So if we come over here. For those of you guys that are just getting familiar with Chef Marcus and Chef Blake, Marcus, take a second to talk about yourself, <laughs> where you're from and where you work now. Um, I have my own uh, like Japanese bento box business. Uh, we're closed right now, but we also do private dining. Um, I've been cooking since I was a kid, probably since 14 or 15 years old. And because then, you wanted to or because you had to? Uh, because I had to. My All right, you were feeding the family. Uh, maybe not feeding the family, but my parents encouraged me at a young age to get a job. Um, I like your setup here, Chef. You yeah, put that thanks. right on the coals. Yep, right on the coals here. Um, we're going to put this down skin side down just so we can render a little bit of that fat out. I tried to get this as, as uh, level as I can just so the oil is not going to pool. But you do what you can. All right. So we've got all our chicken in here. And we're just going to brown this on the outside. You, you must have started watching some of that Amazon kitchen that I turned you guys into. <laughs> Chef, did, did you watch any of oh, that? Oh, it's yet, so like? good. <laughs> you like it? That's a yeah, little thank you for that. So we're just going to tilt this up and down, just kind of redistribute that oil. 
like I said, we just want to make sure it's nice and level, or as level as we can. So um, you can see here we're not overcrowding this pot. Um, we do want color on here, and that's actually happening pretty quickly, which is nice. So uh, we're going to let this go for another minute or so, give it a flip, cook it for another minute, and then we're going to remove everything and then just kind of cook all of our aromatics and whatever fat renders out from there. So we're just getting some good color on it right exactly. now. Exactly. Um, and if you look over here, um, we have uh, red, uh, red onion, which we slice. This is uh, fennel, which is julienne. We have kind of a th thicker uh, julienne of bell pepper here. A uh, couple carrots, uh, sliced garlic, fennel to garnish, uh, along with some basil. And that's about it. Oh, chicken stock and tomato. So crushed tomato, we're not even going to use all of this. And then we're just going to braise it in the stock that we made from the chicken bones. So how does this fit in with the class? So uh, we go over all of these kind of cuts uh, for our mise en place here. Um, and then we also teach our students how to make and utilize uh, the entire chicken. There says there's no waste. In a professional kitchen, you want to mitigate waste as much as possible. So we teach them uh, techniques like stock making. Um, and then how to apply it into a complete dish. Perfect. As you're doing that, let's go over here and peek in with Chef Blake. Chef Blake, you brought some toys with you, too. Yeah, man. I, I get a really deep-rooted passion for making fresh pasta, something I've been kind of focusing on for about 10 years. Um, and I, I, I'm still not tired of it, so I guess you could call it love. Wow. <laughs> and you should be probably pretty good at it by I, now. I should hope so. Um, yeah, this machine right here, uh, not so much a machine, it's just a tool. It's called a Kitara. Um, and it's, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to roll out sheets of pasta out of this fresh pasta dough through our machine right here. And then we're going to lay them flat onto here. And we're going to press them through with this, uh, this rolling pin right here. And that's these little different spacings on top of this, um, this box right here are going to be the, the, the thickness of the noodles each. And then if you see, if we flip it over there, we got a little bit thinner ones Ooh, right yes here. Yes, you do. Yeah, so. The double-sided. Multi, Multi-faceted tool, this guy. Now, I can't, that seems pretty labor-intensive, this, right? Uh, Are you using that on a daily basis for your pasta making? You know, I used to. I used to make about 100 orders a day. Did you really? Each one of these guys, yeah. It was a good time. Unbelievable. Had to start pretty early in the morning. Yep, same question to you, uh, Chef Blake. What, uh, as people are getting familiarized with you, what do you do with yourself? <laughs> Pretty uh, open-ended question, yeah, isn't I, it? Yeah, I guess so. Well, I mean, I like to read and bath, I, take uh, long baths. I love to stay busy. Um, kind of like Chef Marcus, I started my own private chef business during this whole uh, COVID shutdown scare. Yeah. And it's, it's doing pretty good. Um, if you guys are curious, denverprivatechef.com. Surprised I locked down that, that, that domain name right there. That's but a good one. It was open. Um, yeah, and I, I work. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out by the name what you do. <laughs> that is a good one. DenverPrivateChef.com. Gets, gets some pretty good traffic. Um, yeah, and then I, I work in a restaurant a couple days a week just uh, making fresh pasta, as you can see right here, and working on the line just because I enjoy it. And then uh, Monday through Friday, I, I teach culinary quick start with Chef Marcus. You're busy. Oh, yeah. Very busy. All right, we'll jump back over here with Marcus. Are you ready to go with yeah, this? Yeah, I'm about to oh. start sending this guy through here. Let's do it. I'm cool. not jumping it all in. All right. So you can see how this machine right here is going to help us out and stretch these babies out. And what are you looking for on there? Um, I'm feeling this dough right here. You don't want it to be too too wet or too dry. You want to find a really nice balance with your, with your sheet of dough here. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to fold this over and kind of we'll do this technique that we call booking and this is going to add some really nice chew to this dough so you know you often hear al dente as a, refer, a reference to to your pasta noodles right and this is going to assist in that because this much like a, a loaf of bread this has got flour in it, it's got egg in it, it's got water in it um and so with the flour there's also that weak gluten protein in there so the more that we to manipulate this the, the, the tighter those little protein strands are going to become wound up and they're going to give you a lot more bite. <clears throat> I love the process. And there's a lot of science behind this There as well. sure is. All 
There we go. Feeling my dough, making sure it's not too, too wet. If it's too wet, we'll add a little bit of flour to it. To tell you how much Chef Blake loves this, he's got, uh, what, what do you have, 12 of those in your freezer right now <laughs> at home? I got about 10 left. Yeah, 10 left. I'm a sucker for some good pasta. So the setting keeps getting thinner each time? Yeah, so as we adjust this dial, we move these two rollers inside here a little bit closer. So what it's going to do is squeeze that dough as it goes in there, which in return makes it a little bit longer and uh, also thinner. This is a treat. <laughs> this is going to be a treat. I hope you fellas are hungry. What goes into making your pasta? What ingredients, if the, you can tell? So I like semolina flour, um, type double zero flour, if it's available. If not, all-purpose flour will work just fine. Um, a little bit of egg and a little bit of water and a whole lot of love. <laughs> I guarantee it. I can't believe it just keeps getting longer and thinner, even though you're doubling it up. Look at that. So when do you know you're done? I'm going to run this through maybe one more time. I dare you. So we can see the thickness on there from yeah. the side. And I think that'll be a pretty good, a pretty good thickness for the tagliatelle we're going to do today. Something real simple, just a little bit of chicken stock, some crushed plum tomatoes, basil, a little fennel, and some shaved garlic. And of course, some really nice Parmesan cheese just to finish it off. So this final roll through here. And then what I want to do is take this little tool right here and start cutting my sheets. And so we were pretty lucky. I didn't have to add any flour to this as I rolled it through the machine. But I'm thinking I want to give it just a little bit before I push it through there because there's still a ton of moisture inside this pasta dough. And we want to make sure that the noodles don't stick together. So. I'm crazy excited to see this. Cool. So I do that. Maybe give it, well. Now, what are you looking for right now, Chef? Just kind of feeling the moisture level of this. And so I can push this guy forward and stretch out the noodle slightly, then let it pop right down in there. So you can see these, these wires on here have cut these noodles to the exact length that we want. And then they have the same thickness that we had coming out of the machine. Pretty cool, right? Very cool. And you can go even thinner on the other side. Yeah, the other one will give us a really nice, very kind of a delicate noodle. Maybe a little bit more flour. The students always tend to really like this day. I think that um, exposure to like fresh pasta is kind of limited even still. Sure. Uh, most people are, they're just very used to eating barilla or, or de, de cacho, which is totally fine. I mean, they're both great dried noodles, but mm -hmm. I think they're always kind of shocked when they actually taste a fresh noodle for the first time. And they're like, holy smokes, this is cool. And we like the fresh ones because they cook like that. I mean, you're in and out of the water in a minute and 20 seconds. Beautiful. So as all roads lead back to the Emily Griffith Culinary Quick Start and being here in Studio Kitchen as well, what are some of the accomplishments that you've seen throughout the years as teaching and just students and maybe jobs or 
um, just an overall? Um, I, I think the amount of students that we've got working in the industry over the past few years mm -hmm. is just, it was a staggering number before COVID. We were like over 500 placed and working in restaurants in Denver, which was a, I think that was probably my most proud uh, accomplishment through the program. You know, that and just like running into these, these, these guys inside of kitchens when you're out eating dinner is the coolest thing ever. You know, and they'll sometimes like wave at you or come around and say hello. And yeah, it just makes you feel good. Just a, the ability to do something really nice. And how do you feel about the migration of the program? Um, kind of throughout the years, you've seen it develop and, and mature and, and yeah. tweaked it a little bit. We're just getting better and better every time. I mean, we don't, we very rarely omit anything from the program. It's always additions to it. Yeah. Just because we want to like keep it up and keep it fresh and keep, keep cooks interested in what we, we have to teach these guys, you know? One of the fun things about Studio Kitchen being kind of that um, proverbial stage is we can bring other talented people in here as well to offer some of their expertise to highlight and enhance the curriculum as well. So as a lot of industry people watch the show, chefs and restaurant tours to the chefs what's the call out of like we want to hear from you we want you to participate in this program as well yeah absolutely we we love having guest chefs come in and, and talk about their restaurants and what they're doing the kind of food that they're uh, that they're creating and and if, especially if they're looking to hire some cooks man we would love to sure. just get some um some like one-on-one -on -one time with the students and those potential chefs who want to come in and talk about their business i agree it's important to get to know um Chef Blake and Chef Marcus, because when you trust in what they're doing and have the input and involvement, the baseline of knowledge that these folks come out of this program with is truly going to save money for starting from scratch with mm -hmm. anybody in the kitchen. Yeah, you say, I mean, if, if somebody's got the passion for it and they're very interested in cooking food professionally, this, I think that we've got a lot to to offer as far as getting in a little bit ahead of the curve, you know? I agree. Chef Marcus, what do you got going on except beautiful things? Oh, nothing much. Just adjusting these coals here. Um, just want to fan it, uh, kind of get some of that ash off so you can get some fresh burn and then uh, raise the heat a little bit. So we're just going to add some oxygen to the equation here. Um, and then we're just going to move this back on. So. Um, we've got all our aromatics in here. We just added the a little bit of wine, about a glass or so. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to add our stock and our tomato. And then add our chicken back. So we've got our, our wine. You can smell yeah. like the alcohol is burnt off. Definitely. So we're going to add our stock here. And I've got my lid here with some more coals just kind of heating up so that we're not really interrupting the cooking process here. We're going to add half of this. Now we'll just go for it. Okay. Yeah, we'll just go for it. Yeah, we're just going to go for it today. I like this setup. Yeah, right? Yeah, I love cooking on charcoal and wood flames. It's, uh, I think, just the very essence of cooking. It's just a little, a little more raw. All right, so we're going to bring this up. We're going to nestle our meat back in here ever so gently. You're nestling your meat ever yeah. so gently. <laughs> You're, you you are it. perfect for this program. Very descriptive, chef. <laughs> All right. So now that that's nestled. And you are right. Um, make sure you get those juices in there. Um, yeah, we're going to just wait for this to kind of come up to a simmer. Then we're going to cover it. And then we're going to check back on this in about 20 minutes or so. Perfect. All right, is it pasta cooking time yet? Uh, we're gonna build our sauce really quick because okay. I think uh, I think all of us want to get a little bite of this stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So what I'm gonna doing right now is I'm shaving some uh, some garlic pretty thin. We're gonna toast this up in the pan. I'm using the mandolin for this, and we do a lot of um, product description and like how to utilize these tools inside of your kitchens that you'd really commonly see in just about every single professional restaurant, which is great for our students. 
again, if you have any interest in this program, which you should. I mean, it, it is a no cost. Uh, it's basically a gimme. A lot of people are paying big bucks to go online just to learn how to cook. Um, here's something that would be perfect for you. Go to themoderneater.com. Click on the Emily Griffith Culinary Quick Start tab. There's a sign-up form there. It says uh, sign up. More information is signing up. Just put your name on there. We'll contact you and see uh, is this the right fit for you. But the commitment is small. It's three weeks. It's four days in the week. Double up on Thursdays, right, Chef? That's right. Yeah, we do a long class on Thursdays, so you're only in there for Monday through Thursday. And we uh, offer a hiring fair every, uh, every single month, too. So if you're actively seeking a job, we can definitely help you with that. And when they say long class on Thursday, it's not like you're doing math equations or anything. <laughs> it's really actually very, very entertaining. But the educational portion of it and the knowledge that these two chefs bring to the table, it's bar none. And, and really encourage anybody who's either looking to sharpen their skills or just get in the kitchen for the first time. I'll tell you what, Emily Griffith Culinary Quick Start with Chef Blake and Chef Marcus. It's what you want to do. Marcus, it's looking good over there, my friend. You're even taking yeah. some pictures, huh? Yep. Got to. Got to document this. So um, I just fed the, uh, the charcoal a bit. We just put some on top, but we just want to, again, just give it a little oxygen. It's okay if a little of that char gets in there, too. It's flavor country, right? Oh, it's earth. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, uh, thank you so much to Rich O'Brien and Elevation Food Service reps for giving us everything that we need here in this kitchen and also to Proud Soul Souls. Proud Souls Barbecue and Provisions um, for giving us this Yoder Smoker. It's so cool. Josh Oakley's still here with us in the kitchen. And I think it's lunchtime. You can just move all my stuff to the side and those microphones. But we're going to set up some food. I, th I think he actually just wants to get his dishes back. <laughs> uh, thank you, Chef, for being here with us today. Okay, Marcus, this is coming together. But we need this needs time. Yeah, so we're going to cover it and uh, just uh, wait. You gotta be patient. We promise you pictures to all of this. They'll be on the moderneater.com and the Modern Eater's Facebook page, along with our Instagram as well. Over the weekend, we had a uh, great trip up to the Monarch Casino in Blackhawk and had an opportunity to see their facilities. And I'll tell you what, you guys, elevated food when it comes to, like buffet, you think, okay, buffet? No. You, there's literally chefs around at each station, taking it very seriously. And also the chop house at the Monarch. Chef, I gotta take you up there with me. What I was the crab situation like? They got crabs up there? <laughs> I almost gave <laughs> your joke. <laughs> you, ta you tainted me a little bit with that. No, yes, yes, full swing, full swing. Really? Well, is there a, short a crab shortage in the world that I don't know about? Is that? No, just on my plate. Just on your plate, yeah, the crabs there. But the Monarch Steakhouse was good as well. <laughs> Great. I'll have to check it out. Okay. What else we got going on, you guys? We're uh, firing this sauce off real quick. Gonna put our shaved garlic inside this pan. We're going to let it toast up a little bit before we deglaze with, uh, with white wine. These are all things our students get to look forward to this week, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of new terminology we... We tell them it's kind of like learning French a little bit because we're our words are definitely still steeped in French. Throw out some terminology. I'm sorry. Throw out some terminology out sure, there. Sure, I could display it too. What we're gonna do is deglaze this pan. Deglaze is a big word we like to use. <laughs> Check out Marcus fan on his coals over here. Jay, what does deglazing mean? Uh, deglazing uh, means we're gonna uh, hit this pan uh, with a liquid. Hit that pan with a liquid. And uh, I know you're supposed to, you're taking the color, you're the, the, the browning off of the pan and incorporating it into uh, the garlic, right? Yeah, so or a lot of normally times onions. When, we, when we braise an item or when we, when we sear an item in a pan, um, you can add a liquid to it, which was the deglazing process, and it'll lift that fond off the bottom. And now all those little crispy bits or those dark caramelized uh, residual pieces that fall off the item that's being cooked gets to be put inside the sauce or, or reincorporated into the dish, which man, is a I'll pretty... I'll, I'll tell you, man, the smell of the garlic and the wine together as he's cooking it, man, that just, 
makes you want to put down all your cameras, all your phones, and just bury your face into the food, you know? Put a little fennel in there. It's a nice, thinly shaped fennel. A little chicken stock. Some of this really great chicken stock where our class made for stock day last week on, what was that, Wednesday, Marcus? Yep. We're going to give it some tomato and a little bit of basil. We're going to put the basil in at the end, though, just to keep it really nice and bright and green. Because if you put it in too soon, it's going to turn kind of drab and gray. So I'm going to season these with a little bit of salt and pepper. I think uh, Marcus has got the monopoly on that stuff right now. pepper now we're going to taste it because tasting your food is something that is incredibly important that i think that even though we're living in the covid world you still need to train your cooks to be able to identify if their food needs to be seasoned a little bit different if it needs salt if it needs balance you need acid you need to you need to change or alter it and make sure it's perfect before it goes out to the table because your guest is paying money for this What I love about this is, and truly by watching the class this past week, all of the basic steps that you had leading up to this point is creating this dish. Absolutely. You want to try it? I do want to try it. And so it's going to taste a little bit different when we add that basil there at the end. And then we're going to grate a little bit of really nice Parmesan cheese on top. So it'll come together to be a pretty beautiful, fresh pasta dish, all made within about, what, 10 minutes? Yes. And Not it's bad. Just so bright and flavorful. Perfect. Just all fresh ingredients. Mm. Cool. We're going to turn this down, let it simmer. Mama mia. And we're going to drop our noodles. And these guys are going to flash. And they're going to cook within about maybe a minute to a minute and a half. Yep, flam, <laughs> fam those flames there, Mark. You can't hurry <laughs> that over there, though. And for the sake of what we're doing, of course, we can't go another 15 or 20 minutes till it's done. So this will give you the encouragement to check back to our Facebook page to see this final product. But we definitely need to see the noodles get done here. So we're going to give these a shake just to make sure that they don't stick. We're going to let them hang out in this salted boiling water for... Just about another minute, because we rolled them a little bit thin, if you guys remember. Yeah. So fresher ingredients, when it comes to pasta, will cook faster. Fresh pasta always cooks a little bit faster, um, because it still retains a lot of moisture inside of it. Gotcha. Um, the dried noodles, we have to reconstitute those and then cook them as well. Mm -hmm. So you can see that your dried pastas are usually going to take about 11 to like 14 minutes, depending on the noodle. Unbelievable. Uh, a treat. Hey, Chef, is there any difference nutritionally in, you know, store-bought pasta versus homemade pastas, you know, as far as you know, fat content, calories, et cetera? So this pasta, I think, would have a little bit more, cal a little bit more calorie to it um, because it's got a little bit more fat in it. It's got eggs in it. Um, those dried noodles from, the, from the, the grocery store typically are only just semolina and water. And, and, and uh, a lot less preservatives this way true as as well so those preservatives will do all kinds of crazy stuff to you as far as um just how your body reacts and inflammation and processing it too so fresh is always if you get if you have the luxury the, the best way to go that's right so we're going to give this noodle a taste and see the level of al dente we're working with oh yeah we're in business yeah Give it a shot. I want to take an opportunity real quick to tell you about what we're doing on Wednesday. The Modern Eater Show, we're going to take off to a 45-year restaurant here in Colorado. And Las Delicias. I don't know if you know who Roberto Torres is, but a Senior has done a lot of great work here in Colorado. And we have a special opportunity 
to honor him for 45 years. We're going to go to Las Delicias, and we're going to talk to uh, senior Roberto Torres on Wednesday. I'm really looking forward to that. Just cooking up a storm here. A lot how, of cooking in the kitchen how today. we do. And let that cook in the sauce, and then we can go to plate. Can I borrow your, uh, your peeler? Peeler, yep. Smells so good. Thanks. Actually, I think I have mine. We still have ours. Thank you. Yep. A little bit extra. <laughs> Can't go wrong with that. You do a little side one of these things. Oh, Greg's getting some plates. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. I want to, uh, while we got the chefs here, put their taste buds on that. Grab a fork, boys. I want you to taste this before you take it off. I haven't eaten all day. Yeah, I hope you're hungry. I am. Rag of lamb, pasta, yep. chicken cacciatore. You know, I think it's not intermittent fasting. It's inadvertent fasting. I just, <laughs> like, turns out I just don't eat until, you know, there's a yes. huge amount of food that shows up. What's that? All right, here we go. We've got, got our chefs here with us still. Got to get a little taste going. Oh, yeah. See, that's, that's the one right there, all that garlic coming in. Can't forget this. Forgot my fancy olive oil at home. Sorry, guys. Don't ever do that again. What's that? Don't ever do that again. <laughs> they are civilians right now. <laughs> so now it's uh, Josh and Tony. There we go. Give it a shot. Let me know what you think. Grab a dish there, boys. Of course. From ball of dough to noodles and sauce in 10 minutes. Should be bright, fresh. All right. Semolina, yeah. Catch me slurping. That's great. I was talking to Chef here. He said put semolina in the dough, which is a nice way to add texture to it. So pasta dough doesn't get mushy on you. That's good. That's wonderful. It's excellent. Thank you. She's How's that looking over there? My pleasure. <laughs> How's that looking over there, Marcus? Oh, she's working. You can see the steam escaping. Oh, yeah. So. I got those coals on the bottom and the top. Yep. We're cooking gotcha. from two different it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why this is the first time we started this thing up. Though. Yeah, right? This, this this grill is amazing. And then, yeah, we'll have a nice bed of embers to just... I'm going to throw this rack of lamb, like, straight on them. We will show you the final product again Wednesday. We'll be at Las Delicious in Uptown, and we'll be catching up with Roberto Torres Sr. Junior will come in, too, and that whole family of Las Delicious. 45 years serving us. That'll be Wednesday. Um, classes continue. Yeah. Can't get in on this one, but uh, the next course in February, you can join in as well. I can't thank everybody enough. Chef Josh Oakley taking the time for us here today. You're welcome. I appreciate the time. And finally, again, just getting this one-on-one -on -one with you.
We're going to do some more. And Chef Anthony, it's good to meet new friends. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Chef Blake, thank you. Chef Marcus, thank you. We've got some eating to do. <laughs> for Jay Parker, myself, Greg Holland, back. Hope you had a great Monday. We'll see you on Wednesday. Thanks for being around. Whatever you do, stay safe, stay warm, and be good to each other. See you back on Wednesday. The Modern Eater Show continues. <laughs>